Brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, my name's Cuba Libre, and welcome back to Let's Play Mark the Ninja. Let's move on to level 8, the Inner Keep. Let's check out our upgrades. This allows you to automatically stealth kill a disabled enemy. Not necessarily the most useful thing in the entire world, given that uh, you can stealth kill disabled enemies pretty easily, because they're disabled. <laughs> but uh, it gives you bonus points. Um, over here we have just softer footsteps. So basically that just uh, makes your footfall softer. It's pretty much a straight upgrade. It's awesome. No reason not to get it. We made it to the inner keep. Come on. So now we're done with that catacombs bullshit, and we're back to. The count get away. Before you try to catch him, cut off his escape routes, and watch out. Looks like his best troops are on patrol. We are back to. Easy to take down. Oh, shut up. Do your best to sneak past them. Okay, are we done now? Uh, we're back to fun guards and towers and lasers and all those good elements combined. So far, so easy. Hide ourselves some bodies for some bonus points. So the castle is a pretty big area, and there are lots of ways around and in. You can go down and around, you can go straight in the front, you can go up and over the big towers. So, I will be doing a fair amount of backtracking, not because it's necessary, but just because I'm not 100% sure of that I've explored every nook, you know, trying to get um, all the scrolls and everything else, and kill everybody for points. Beautiful, beautiful points. Man, thank God for the uh, stealth kill upgrades. They are super handy. That would have been much more difficult without the ability to just kill people from uh, the grate. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a sniper laser there. I couldn't see the sniper because he was up above me, but you could see the laser, so... Definitely don't want to go that way. Instead, let's take him from the top, where he can't react. Again, snipers. Ultimately powerful in one direction, completely vulnerable in the other direction. It's a nice little balance. Woo! Just barely made it. It's, it's tough to get behind this guy. But I just do anyway. Again, you can jump just from in front of it in the dark. You can jump from in front of a guy behind him without him seeing you. But it's just kind of risky. Again, a little points grinding here. Might as well toss him in. I could do the same with the sniper's corpse, but meh. Every single corpse in a dumpster. Not worth your time. So going in the front door is probably a bad idea, so let's try a different way. It is, after all, a ninja game. This poor motherfucker has never had a chance. <laughs> Twelve jurors, one judge, have a chance. If you can name that reference, you are a hero in my eyes. Steam notifications, should probably turn them off when playing a game to record it. But then again, why bother? It's for maximum new games journalism personality. You can see my Steam friends and what they are playing. And the solution here is obvious. These guys like to hang out together. So wait till we turn around again and hit the guy in the back. I 
and then toss his body the hell off the cliff so the next guy doesn't see him when he comes out. And check out the next level while that guy is walking around down there. This guard, I don't even know why they bought it. It put one dude alone up here in the belfry. Lone guard is a dead guard. What a waste of time. I don't know. I, you could probably even tell by my commentary, but I just, I don't know. I like these levels a lot more. <laughs> um, after this whole Karajan part, you'll see the game is not over. And there's some levels that I don't like as much. In fact, I've been avoiding playing them. They're not terrible. They're actually pretty fun in their own way, but I don't know. I just have a busy life, and it has been on top of my priority list. And I already had commentaries to record anyway, so it's not like... Y'all are waiting for me to play, play more, actually. I will need to do that in the next few days, though. Bam. Lots of artifacts and stuff. No scrolls yet. And here I am checking out uh, the seals to make sure that I am not missing any. Because, of course, that would be terrible. So far, so good. It's a long level, so... The fact that I haven't got a scroll yet is kind of freaking me out. It's kind of why I'm going back right now and say, Okay, what did I miss? Is there a scroll around here? There's that front doorway in. Which I skipped. Uh, so in the interest of lateral progression, if that makes sense. I'm going to go that way and just see if there's anything around here that I need. Uh, not terribly complex situation here. It's in the dark. The only problem is managing lightning. So I have to make sure the lightning strikes first. Then I can pop out and kill the guy without the other seeing. Uh, and then I just run away instead. I guess I decide, since the guy in the stairs is staying still, if I go around the upper way, it'll be much easier to kill him from behind. And then draw the already patrolling guy to me than the other way around. Looking at it here now, doesn't really matter. Now that almost fucked me. Those damn birds. But luckily, I was very quick. Waiting for him to turn around again. They like to kind of look back and forth when they get to the distraction that distracted them. So if you have a good hiding spot, you can sort of wait for them to turn around. And they do, they face each direction in a couple seconds, so you can wait. Ooh, almost missed that dude. This I'm trying to make sure I drop right behind him without actually kind of touching him to the extent that he will see me. I managed to sneak in, which is good. So now we have flashing lightning and a flashing light. I decide that is too much flashing light for me to deal with. Fuck that. I'm just going to take that light out. He seems to be pretty dead set on staring that way, so... Let's go get him. Done and done. I'm hoping here I can drop the body to terrorize people, but there's not a good enough... He's too far underneath the ledge that I can drop him, so... Lightning done, let's kill this guy. And then we'll use the lightning. We will wait for this guy to see the corpse, so he runs over the grate, and then I can grab him. Mmm, clockwork. I love it when a plan comes together. Alright, now we can continue on. Once again, there's a minimum of two ways to go here. One over the towers, and the other through the front door. 
So, as normal, I favor the uh, sneaky way first. However, that just dead ends, actually. You can't jump up any farther than that. It's just a nice little uh, alcove to find an artifact. So, this is a true uh, bottleneck right here. Just looking at more scrolls thinking, or looking at the seals thinking, you know, I still haven't found a scroll yet. I don't know. That's good or not, but I'm pretty certain I've explored everything, so let's just keep moving. I think I mentioned this once before in a different video, but the scrolls are sort of like the, the seals as displayed on the menu are sort of in the order that you find them in the level. So if you pick up a scroll and it's like the second seal, uh, you probably want to... Uh, you probably missed one. Put it that way. Now this is an interesting problem. That guy's sitting there. I was hoping that would distract him and make him walk over. The ceiling um, crawly hook things that let you crawl on the ceiling don't extend over the guy. So I can't get over him really. And there's not enough room to jump over his head. I'd run into the ceiling and drop down right in front of him. So I have to distract him some way. Right now what I'm hoping to do my idea is, alright, what I'm going to do is drag the body outside. When the lightning strikes, it will be in the light, and then the sitting down guy will see him and come out to investigate. But I don't want to do that quite yet, because I want to take care of this other guy first. So first I use the body to attract the guy on the left. Then I'm going to use the bodies to attract the guy on the right. Unfortunately, it's just too far away. You can't see it all the way out the door like that. So this is one of the few situations in the game where I really feel there's no way to stealth kill this guy without um, an item on him. So I just gas him, take him out. There's your bloody whisper, what I just bought. So I only had to just press attack on him to automatically kill him. Didn't have to uh, do the pressing one way thing because he was disabled by the poison gas. Again, that upgrade, yeah of minor importance, but whatever. Nothing much else to spend it on. That guy looks tough. Even a surprise attack might not bring him down. You'll need to daze him somehow before you move in for the kill. Alright, so here we meet our first elite guards. These dudes are beefy, but not invulnerable, so... Uh, you cannot just stealth kill them normally. If you walk up behind them and try to attack them, they'll shake you off and uh, get in combat and start an alarm. What you have to do is disable them. You can do this a variety of ways, the easiest ways with your items, but hopefully the game, once it, because it's introducing these elite guards for the first time, gives you ways to disable them. So, for example, there's this uh, open wires that electrocute him and then you can kill him. As you can see the disabling is 250 points killing is 800. Pretty sweet. Now this is to teach you that they are just as vulnerable to falling environmental damage as the regular guards. Chandelier straight out kill. Done and done. And here we have a beautiful little situation. So as you can tell Custom made for terrorizing. You got that dude all by himself up top, and then a bunch of dudes all in some nice light underneath, and you can drop the body right down on them. Um, this reveals a couple things. Well, I'll show you when it happens. When I finally decide to bite the bullet and kill this guy, I'm just I just don't want them to turn around at an inopportune time and see me. Well, so what have we learned? The big dudes don't get terrorized. Um, they will not terror. They're more solid than that. The little dude did get terrorized, though. However, the big dude's not immune to gunfire, which I think is cool. Just because they're beefy people doesn't mean that bullets don't kill them. So it just takes one shot, same as always. Um, My violent hunger. Sorry. Ropes through the darkness. So, 
That is me looking at my scroll icons and saying I only have the second icon. Again, usually that means that you missed the first one, so I'm pretty concerned about that, so I checked my map, but I find that this place is dead end, so I might as well do this first. That will just show you that gas will kill those guys, but um, it would only kill the elite dudes because they don't have the gas masks. That little dude would have had a gas mask. Plus, even if it killed all three of them, you get more points for terrorizing them. So, you know, why not? <laughs> Terrorize everybody, have them shoot each other, that's always the better option. That jump cut was because I was worried about that first scroll, ran all over the place looking for it, behind me, couldn't find it, decided, you know what, forget it, I'm just going to move on, see if I get lucky. And lo, I find a challenge room, just in the next room. Hooray! this one. So this is 100% based on the fact that corpses block or turn off lasers. And really, that's all there is to it. They give you a bunch of pre-made corpses, thanks. <laughs> and uh, lets you manipulate them to turn off the lasers. The general I'm not going to explain this step by step, it's pretty obvious once you see it. The general idea is for you to use the minimum number of corpses that you need to get where you're going, coupled with the uh, necessity to... So if you can drag corpses back from places that you no longer need them, um, dropping them down to the next area so they can be utilized. Um, I think I actually end up with one corpse too many. So obviously what I need to do here is leave that one. I don't see that yet. I'm trying to figure out a way to get myself an extra corpse, which you can do because of the vents that allow you to bypass those other lasers. Um, and I just followed it out. So, you don't actually need to do this, I don't think. You can... You, you need to leave one corpse on the button all the way on the left, obviously. What I need to move, do is move that corpse on the right right now to the button, then use that corpse that's on the left to drag back across the lasers in this hallway. And... Nope, still haven't figured it out. I'm hoping I can use one body to stop two lasers, but they're of course spaced, so you cannot do that. And I am still too dumb to figure this out right now. I don't even know why I kept all this footage in. I guess so you can see that even though I call the challenge rooms easy, if you just miss... think, <laughs> if that's a word, you can get stuck on them and be like, huh, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know where this go. And I'm like, oh, stupid. Stupid. So, easy enough. So that button opens up the downward thing, which allows you to toss more bodies downward. And you need a big old pile of bodies down here. Basically, you need one for each moving laser. Now, I guess this is supposed to teach you, slash, allow you to exploit the range on the guard's automatic turn off laser switch thing. Basically you need to put them in a position so that the scrolling laser always um, is in the range of the body so they never turn back on. And this last thing took me a long time the first time I played it because I assumed that, electri that electrified wall right there will zap you if you run into it. You can't cross it. But you can throw bodies right across it like it isn't there. The first time I played this challenge room, I just assumed the bodies wouldn't cross it, so I was like, how do I get the body over top of that wall to get rid of that last laser? But it's nothing special. You just toss it over. Your fear is always... Ooh. That's very uh, meaningful. Now, in this time... 
Oh, the Hisomu Terror Dart. Forget about what I was just going to say, let's talk about this fucking shit. You shoot it at a dude, he automatically becomes terrorized. You can terrorize any guy whenever you want. It is awesome. It's, in my opinion, the best attack item in the game. And I just always equip it. I never use any other attack items once you get it. Because I don't know why you would even bother. <laughs> it's just too good. It is that good. Now, to get back to what I was saying... Uh, to get back to what I was saying... For whatever reason, this, the, the scroll I got seems to me in the level design. Now, the level design is a little circuitous here, and it's not entirely linear, so I guess it's arguable, but the one I got seems to me to be definitely before the challenge room. But the challenge room is the first icon, and the one I, the first one I got is the second icon. Uh, I really don't know what to say about that. Um, I think this is the only time when it really happens in the game. I could be mistaken about that, but anyways. It really concerned me. <laughs> so, um, you saw that elite guard out there. Uh, I believe the one on the bottom floor. There is no way to kill him. It's provided for you by the game. If they start doing that. The first few, you know, they're showing all the different ways you can kill them without items. But event, some of them you just need items. You need to disable him with an item. And this is another reason why I always tend to carry smoke bombs, they have that gas, and it disables these elite guards. So, he's disabled, and now I kill him. Done and done. Easy. Now this is a delicate operation here. Target could be over here. Woo! Just barely got him in time. I could have still gone, jumped up, and got him from behind as he walked, but it was a just barely kind of a thing. So, lights out. Once again, I'm pretty sure this dude has no way to kill him. Uh, provided for you in the environment. No way to disable him, so just gotta use another item. It's totally worth it, though. You get 250 for uh, disabling him, plus 800 for the kill. That's like a cra That's more points than a fucking scroll. I mean, that's a crazy amount of points. So there's, if you have the items, there's no reason not to use them to kill the uh, the elite guards. There's no better way, of, no better use that you were gonna have for them. We can't let Karajan escape again. We can either take out the pilot or destroy the fuel pump. Either way, he'll be trapped like the rat he is. Alright, so one another one of the seals here is to disable the helicopter without being detected. And of course you can still go kill the guy once you disable it, so there's no reason not to. Um, so, you should disable it first and then go kill him. Maximize your points. Of course you get points for disabling it as well, so why not? You see me closing more doors, that's because there's a lot of interior lights that are quite bright, in the sense that they have a, a large um, radius, and I don't want the light to poke out from the open doorways and have guards see me, so I close the doors behind me. Bright light with two dudes facing each other, always a harder situation, but not when you have a ready-made distraction hanging out. Thank God for breakable lights. As long as I can aim at it. It's hard because the dude right in front of me is right in the way. All I need is that, that guy on the right to turn around for like a second. And it's killing time. Uh, I forget what that switch actually does. I think it might open the air vent that you see above there, which is the would be the stealthy way to get past this. From what I can say, if you can't kill the guards, I think the only way to do this is... Uh, a smoke bomb? Because I don't see any way that you could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any way to peek through that gate and blow up that power box to turn off the lasers without a corpse to get the lasers out of the way in the first place. Or a smoke bomb. So, like, if you're playing this game stealth style, if you're playing this level, 
and you're trying to ghost it, you, you need smoke bombs. It's another reason to always take smoke bombs, because they're the only distraction item that, um... Now, there's another elite guard and the pilot. And here we learn another nice, neat thing. The terror darts do not kill, do not terrorize the elite guards, but they do distract them. So, just another great use for them. I fucking love those terror darts. And that's a helicopter pilot, so that's the other way to complete the disabled helicopter objective. Now, I got all my seals except the uh, final scroll. And there's still a decent amount of level left, so I'm pretty confident I will find it somewhere. So I was talking about... Smoke bombs, right, yes. They're the only distraction item that actually enables a new type of navigation. So, like, it can get you through lasers that, you other that otherwise may be impossible to get through. There's no other item in the game, actually, I think, that does that same thing. Now... You see here, that bright light, I opened the door, the light shined it out on me, and that guy saw me. Luckily, uh, I was able to... This grate was just out of the light radius, which allowed me to pick it and get down there before the other guy saw me. And then I could take out both these guys through the vents and leave this guy alone. That was pretty lucky, I must admit. I would have liked to have strung this guy up and terrorized them first so they shot each other, but say living. Anyway, so that looks, that's what makes the smoke bomb so good and so vital to me. So that's just my standard loadout. Smoke bombs, because you never know if there's a laser you're going to need them on. And terror darts, because terrorizing people is just pretty much always the most point-efficient way to milk dudes for points. And it disables the elite guards. So between those two things, can't lose, man. Can't lose. Little exploring here. That upper route you will see in a moment. There's no reason for it to exist except for stealth, uh, for ghosting. It just allows you to get by that patrolling dude on the bottom. Um, right now, I've since I'm near the end of the level, so I'm concerned about the last scroll. So that's why I'm poking around. But here it is. Poking Raven successful. Russia me to my end. So now I have everything in the level, but I'm like, yeah, hey, what's this for? And it's literally, there. that's it. You push the crate. I don't know, it's one of the most, more weirdly useless things in this game. A crate to push through, there's no reason to make you stop like that. But anyways, end the level. <laughs> you! All of you! Guard me with your lives! You die, and I will live. I feel like he's said this kind of thing before. But he looks worried, and he ought to be. So that's it. Inner keep. One of my favorite little levels, really. I really like those. Um, the elite guards make for an interesting challenge, and it's just it's nicely laid out. Next level is another good one, where you actually assassinate Karajan. Um, but that's this one. All nine seals gained. Thanks, y'all, for watching, and I will see you next mission.